Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today we're looking at the Rocket R91 versus the Lama Zorko GS3 MP. The Rocket R91 was designed by Rocket in order to bring a machine that's on par with the best machines in the world. What they looked at, they looked at their commercial R9 machine and all the commercial parts they had and decided to use that part spin to really push the boundaries on what they do. Their normal, their philosophy is timeless design with no screens. They've obviously broken that philosophy here with this screen. With Lama Zorkum, the approach was similar. The actual GS range started in the 1970s with about eight years ago them releasing the GS3, which came in two models, the AV, which was automatic volumetric, and the MP, this one here, which is a manual paddle. In this case, they've run flow control rather than pressure profiling, in the sense that you can run it at three, six, and nine bars. So both machines have gone to a similar approach of really dialing in coffee, but built differently. So think geared pump versus rotary pump. But let's dive in and look at it section by section and see how these two machines compare and what does that mean. So both these machines are twin boiler machines with saturated group heads. In Rocket's case, it's running a 1.9 litre saturated boiler when Lama Zorko 1 runs 1.5 litres. With the Rocket, you're running a geared pump. So as you turn this lever, the more you turn, the more the pump's running up and down. So you've got full control, one bar, two bar, three bar, nine bars, whatever you want. You're dialing that in through a geared pump. Effectively, as it moves, the more current it gives the pump, the higher it runs. With the Lama Zorka, what they've done is they've run a manual paddle, which runs a switch. And when you move it across, you engage the pump. Now, when you engage the rotary pump, it's effectively running straight to nine bars but then using a bypass valve to reduce it. So as you move the lever, you've got three bars, six bars, and nine bars, allowing you flow control. Difference between the two is on the rocket, it's repeatable. So you could do your profile, like the shot, save it, and then you can just replicate that profile again. On the Lama Zorka, you're always deciding on what you want to do. Pre-infusion, or the ramp up, the brew, and post-infusion, ramp down. So they're slightly different in that respect. And with the Rocket, it's a volumetric machine. So it has a flow control in the sense that you've got volumetrics, you can do single or double shot and it's gonna run that amount of volume of water. Lama Zorka doesn't have that. For the temperature control, both are running PID controls, which is running control of both the brew and steam boiler accessible through the menu. So on the Rocket's case, through the menu here, and in the Lama Zorka's case, through the menu there. The Lama Zorko has IoT technology and you can dial into it with Bluetooth and also adjust it through there. From a coffee perspective, they have taken a different approach, but on both approaches, you've got full control of the temperature and also your brew. So the way you pre-infuse, ramp up, run your shot and ramp down. In this case, you've got a little bit more control on the rocket. Both have an amazing result. When it comes to steam, they're both very on par with each other. The Rocket's running a 3.6 litre boiler, when the Lama Zorka's running a 3.5 litre boiler. Both are running cool touch steam ones, and both are running levers to actuate the steam. So on the Lama Zorka's case, you just press that lever, and on the Rocket's case, you just bring that lever down. Much of a muchness and both have very similar looking steam arms. When it comes to hot water, they're slightly different in the way they've approached it. With the rocket, you've got volumetric hot water. So think of a purge to warm up your cup versus a long black. And presuming the machine is plumped in, you can dial in your water temperature using a screwdriver just across the top here. So you can bring down that temperature to make that perfect long black. On the Lama Zorko, you can also dial in the, the water temperature, but you've only got one setting. So just under here on this side, there's a dial wheel and moving that dial wheel changes the temperature. In this case, it doesn't need to be plumbed in to dial in. So it is better in that respect. 
and not having that volumetric control from the rocket doesn't really make a difference. So the hot water on this machine is actually quite practical. When it comes to water reservoirs, both machines can be plumbed in or run from a tank. In the case of the rocket, the tank sits up here. And you've got a 2.5 litre tank. It makes it easy to fill, but it also takes up some of the cup clearance room. So in that respect, it's a give and take. In the Lama Zorkos case, it runs a 3.5 litre reservoir and it sits behind the drip tray. So it's not as convenient to fill as the rocket, but what it does mean is you've got the full cup clearance at the top here. So you don't have to move cups to fill it up. And in a situation like an office or markets where cups do pile up on top, it does make it a lot more practical. Talking about the situation where it makes it more practical, the drip tray on the Lama Zorko is a lot bigger, it's huge. So if you're not plumbing in the machine and it's not automatically emptying out, it does make sense in that if you're using an environment where it's getting used a lot, you don't have to empty it out too often and it's very easy to pull out and clean. With the rocket, drip tray is a lot smaller. I do feel the rocket, they just presume or assume a machine at this level is going to be plumbed in. Now the reason not to plumb them in is sometimes you want to use the machine in more than one places and that's where Lama Zuko really thought about it. These machines not only are high-end home machines that you've got ultimate flow control, but you can put them in the back of the car, take them to the market, take it to your holiday house or whatever it might be. They're not light, but they travel easily. And I think that's where they've kind of nailed the balance of people who want to plumb them in and have the usability and the functionality or being able to just pick it up and take it with them when I think Rocket really is more focused to being installed in a house, beautiful house, someone that really loves espresso and can really dial in that espresso. We have actually done in-depth reviews on both of these machines. With the Rocket R91, we did a review with Paul Asquith, who really looked at what pressure profiling was and how the same beans got different results just by changing the profile. Actually a really good video if you want to understand this machine better, see how to dial it in, how to program it, and what pressure profiling is. For this video, you can click the link here and you can watch me and Paul really dive into it. With the Lama Zorkel, we've done a video with Eric Martin from Lama Zorkel Australia, which really explained what flow control is and looking at a shot in terms of three, six, and nine bars, and also looking at the milk side of things. So we did an espresso and a milk-based coffee from this machine and kind of looked at it in detail and its history from the GS models. For that, you can click here and see a video with Eric. Both these machines have taken on controlling espresso in a similar yet different way. So on paper, they almost spec out very similar in terms of boiler sizes, water tanks, etc. But what the differences are really is, on the rocket, you've got pressure profiling and repeatability. Not only do you have volumetrics, but if you like a, a flow that you've done, you can save it in the menu. So you've got five different menus you can save, A, B, C, D, and E, and you can always save your last shot and be able to replicate it. So you dial in a, a shot, you really like it, save it, and it's gonna be that shot every time. With Lama Zorko, you need to be looking at these shots individually. You've got flow control in the sense of three, six, and nine bars, but you need to be watching your shot. It's a good way to learn a lot more about coffee, but it is a more manual approach. The result in the cup is very similar because you can run your longer pre-infusions, play with your body, and bring down that post-infusion time. You've also got the gauge at the top, so you are seeing where you are at each step. When it comes to build quality, they're both awesome. Rocket really now design. Their stainless work is one of the best in the industry. And looking at it here in real life, it really is captivating. With the Lama Zorko, they're a classical design. They're built on consistency and quality in the notion of always evolving. They also embrace, cut, embrace customization culture. So although the machine may look a little bit almost boring out of the box, it's endless what you can do to it. So on the steam, they're kind of similar. They both run very similar valves, similar size boilers, and both once you purge them, very dry steam. And when it comes to hot water, there is slight differences, but once again, on par. So for me, which one would I pick? It's kind of hard. The Rocket gives you a lot more control of coffee. The Lama Zorko gives you more versatility. It's easy to pick up this machine and take it with you, run an event, customize it. So it's hard to choose. I think if it was a machine to stay in my house permanently and dial in, I'd probably go the Rocket. 
but I like flexibility. I do like the fact that you can play with these. So in that respect, I'd probably go the Llama Zorkel. Thank you for watching this video on the Rocket R91 versus GS3 MP. Curious to know, are you more on the side of the Rocket or the Llama Zorkel? Do you have one of these or do you have a question for me? Leave me a comment below. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you.